So in this one, let's talk about read uncommitted isolation level in detail. To be precise, let's answer in what situation should we use the read uncommitted isolation level. Right? Now, let's take a step back and talk about what isolation level really is. Isolation level is basically the eye of acid, atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Now, the isolation part, what does this really mean? When there are multiple transactions running in the database in parallel, how much of, how much of changes from one transaction are visible to other? This is what isolation level defines. Now, let me give a little more, uh, little more concrete example. Let's say I have two transactions T1 and T2. Transaction T1 is modifying row 1. Right? Now let's say row 1 had some value A and it is trying to change it to B. Now when transaction T2 is trying to read row 1, while this transaction T1 is running, how much of these changes should be visible to T2 is what is isolation level determines. Right? Should T2 be re when it reads the same row, should it read only the committed changes or uncommitted changes or it should remain blocked and whatnot. This is what is determined by the isolation level. Right? Now, if we talk specific about read uncommitted isolation level, what does this mean? This means that while transaction T1 is running, modifying the row 1, trying to change it from A to B, if in this period my transaction T2 runs and reads the same row, should like if my transaction isolation level is set to read uncommitted, which means that when my transaction T2 reads the same row, it would read B. If my transaction isolation level was read committed, it would read the past committed value, which was A. Right? So because of this read uncommitted isolation level, what happens is that when my transaction T2 reads the row, it might read the uncommitted changes by other transaction. And this is what makes it very interesting. Right? You can very clearly start to see the problems that might happen with this. Right? So this particular isolation level suffers from three major problems because of which it is uh, not very likely for people to use this in production. The three problems are dirty reads, phantom reads and non-repeatable reads. Right? Let's talk about each one of them. What is dirty read? Dirty read typically implies that a transaction can read the data that has been modified by other transaction but not yet committed. This is the definition of read uncommitted which we just talked about a couple of minutes back. Right? That I like T2 is able to read the value which is modified by T1 but not yet committed. Right? Now what can happen? That this transaction T1 might actually roll back. And with, when this transaction rolls back, the transaction T2 is, has already read the value and it started using that value in its computation. Right? Now this is a dirty read, which is not really good when you are looking for correctness in your system. Right? Okay. The second problem is phantom read. Now phantom read, as the name suggests, it's phantom. Basically, that a transaction can read the data that was not there when the transaction started. Right? Basically, for example, when my transaction, let's say transaction T2 fired a query, transaction T1 added a bunch of rows not yet committed, transaction T2 fired a query, the where clause matched the rows that were freshly added by transaction T1, but then transaction T2 did some processing with that, but then transaction T1 aborted. So what would happen? The transaction T2 is actually continuing its work processing the rows that actually never existed because the transaction never committed, the transaction T1 never committed, but transaction T2 used those changes and started processing with that. This is phantom reads that you are reading something that actually does not exist. Right? And this is second big problem with read uncommitted. The third is non-repeatable reads, which means that it is possible that within my same transaction, if I am reading twice the same row due to any reason, I might get two different values. For example, let's say I have transaction T1, which in that transaction modifies the value from A to B and B to C. Transaction T2 fired a read, it got B, it fired another read in that same transaction, but while that was happening, A changed from B to C without commitment, or rather without committing it. Now it would read C, 
So this is non-repeatable reads that when I'm firing the same query or same select or the same rows, it is possible for me to get different results. So this is non-repeatable reads. So repeatable reads is when I'm reading the value for that transaction, I would always get that same value. But here, because it is read uncommitted, which means that while other transactions are modifying the value, my transaction which is running, it might get when it fires two select queries on the same rows, it might get different results. Because of these three reasons, people do not use, uh, most people do not use repeatable or read uncommitted in production. Right? But obviously this exists, it, it, ex it should exist for a reason. Remember, in life, in computer science, in software engineering, we get some, we lose some. If we are losing these three things, what are we getting? We should be getting something that we are relaxing the constraint so much. Let's take a look at what MySQL documentation says. So in the MySQL documentation for read uncommitted, it starts with this line. The select statements are performed in a non-locking fashion. Non-locking. Non-locking is the key. Right? That because when because it is the transaction isolation level is read uncommitted, when second transaction is trying to read the rows, no one has to take a lock on that rows at all. Because it is okay for you to read the uncommitted value. Right? And this non-locking fashion just makes things go a little faster. So you might see a higher throughput, a little higher throughput over here. But obviously the risk, the three risks, dirty reads, phantom reads, non-repeatable reads, they do exist, right? But the non-locking fashion might give you an advantage with throughput. But obviously you are trading off, as again, you get some, you lose some. You are trading off correctness in exchange for a little higher throughput. But the risk of your data going corrupt is little more problematic than throughput, right? Okay, so now comes the question, when should you actually use it? Obviously, when something is introduced, it would have some value where you can take these trade-offs, you can use it. Let me, let's talk about a few use cases. First is, if you look carefully, the problem here was that when I'm using the value, let's say transaction T2 is doing something with the value, if it is not going to write it or update it or update any other row using what you have read, it does not make sense if you read the committed value or the uncommitted value. Let me give a concrete example. Let's say I want to fire a query on my database and get the number of likes count on the post. Do I need to take lock when I'm reading the number of likes happened on the post? Not really. What would happen if I read uncommitted value? I might see like count equal to let's say four, but in reality it is three. Is this end of the world? Not really, right? So in that case, I may go for a read uncommitted isolation level because correctness, it's not, not really required. Plus I'm not using that thing to update anywhere. If I was updating that count, like updating, I was reading that value and using that to update somewhere, then that would have been a problem, right? So in these cases, it is perfectly fine for you to use read uncommitted isolation level, but Given that, please note, given that there is not much upside with respect to performance or throughput, it's not like significantly faster to use read and committed isolation level versus any other, people typically do not use this in production. They typically rely on either repeatable reads or read committed and that's what is pretty much what is configured. But it is important to know that something like this exists, read uncommitted in case you see that thing configured in your database, find out reason why has that been set? What are the disadvantages of that? So that in, for example, if you're working at a, uh, if, if at your workplace, you see an isolation level to be set as read uncommitted and tomorrow you change your use case where a transaction reads and writes using that value, you know you need to change that isolation level. Right. Otherwise, it might lead to data inconsistency issues. So which is why it is important to know all the performance tuning or all the tunable parameters of your database so that you take an informed decision on which one to pick and why. Right. And this is all what I wanted to talk about in this one. The isolation levels is a pretty fascinating topic. I hope this clears up a lot of things about um, read uncommitted isolation level.
I keep writing deep tech stuff across my socials uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Substack and everywhere. So do give me a follow if you find it interesting. So yeah, that's all what I wanted to cover in this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.